we are going to discuss about the basics of XML. Okay, in the basics of XML, first, what is XML? Okay. Extendable Markup Language. Okay. Extendable Markup Language. In the name itself, it tells that it is XML. Extendable Markup Language. Okay. The na in the name itself, it tells that it is a markup language okay xml is one of the available markup languages there are several markup languages available okay in the software development okay but one of the available markup languages is xml but what is the markup language okay what is the markup language okay a markup language is a language which is used to organize the data in a structured format. Markup language is a language which is used to organize the data in a specified structured format. Markup language is a language which is used to organize the data in a specified structured format. See if we write a text file, it is in a structured form. Is it in a structured format? No. But if we write the same or uh, if you write some content in a HTML like if you go for HTML if you know HTML the starting tag and ending tag of HTML it has a head body those who have the basic knowledge of HTML will know this. HTML is the root tag in the HTML file. Head in the head portion we will write script and styles. In the body portion we will write all the HTML components. Like this, the data present in a HTML file will be very structured and organized. Okay? In all the HTML content will be there in the HTML tag. All the script and styles will be there in the head tag. All the HTML components will be there in the body tag. Like this, there will be certain specifications or certain tree hierarchy where the data exists in a HTML file. In the same way, in case of XML also, in case of XML also, the data will be structured and organized. Okay, then why this HTML is used? Do you know what HTML? Why it is used? What is HTML? What is the full form of HTML? Abbreviation of HTML? Hypertext Markup Language. Okay, this HTML is used to display some structured data. Okay or HTML is used to display a structured or organized data in a browser. The purpose of HTML is to display a structured and organized data in the browser. That's the purpose of HTML. We'll discuss about HTML in depth after completion of Hibernate. Okay. when we are going to start about web applications 
okay then we'll discuss about the html what are the tags what are the rules about the html in there but just right now make it not like html is a markup language like any other markup languages and html is a markup language which is used to display organized data on the browser okay and then what about this xml okay xml is also used to okay organize the data in a structured format xml also is used to organize the data in a structured format the html is used to display the content in a browser then where you use the xml files okay <coughs> if it is uh, html markup language okay is used to display the content in the browser but where we use this xml okay in our earlier discussions have we used xml anywhere okay in uh, like earlier have any discussions or earlier spring discussions we have used xml files to configure the data okay then what is that where we use this xml and what is the advantage of using the xml okay that we'll discuss where we use xml means in general we use xml in in two scenarios the first one is if you are configuring anything in the application configuration the first usage of xml the first real time usage, usage of xml is configuration xml is majorly used for configuration files and the second thing is the second usage of xml is transfer of data between multiple systems the first place where we use xml files is configuration the second place where we use xml files is transfer of data transfer of data from one system to another system here system is not the cpu see let's consider like we have a if we have two cpus in hcu okay then what we do if you want to share files between two systems or two cpus we can use lan lan connection okay we can have some shared folder in that shared folder we we can keep the documents from one cpu and we can collect it from another cpu is in just because those two systems or oh sorry those two cpus actually we call it as a system but we should not call as a system in computer language in computer terminology we should call it as cpu or we can call it as machine one machine to another machine or one cpu to another cpu but unfortunately okay we call that computer as a system but system is completely different okay then if you want to connect two cpus we can connect it to a network let's consider like two cpus are not at all connected to a network then how can we access how can we access the information from one system to another system let's consider like we are using google okay if you type google uh, uh, website address in the browser address bar we get the google website now is the google application located in our system did we install google in our system did we install any software to get the google home page did we install any software to get the google home page in our browser no then how the google web page or gmail page or facebook is displayed in our uh, in our browser how facebook or google or gmail is displayed in our browser even though we don't have facebook or gmail or google installed in our machine how how it is displayed because of internet connection 
because of internet connection okay or uh, this we send a request through internet to google server google server sends a response okay it is through internet but let's consider like google and facebook wants to interact for something or gmail or Fa and facebook wants to interact for something else or let's consider like uh, we are booking a ticket in uh, APSRTC or KSRTC or IRCTC. Let's consider like IRCTC. Okay, if you want to book uh, railway ticket in India online, we use IRCTC. Then, if you are booking online ticket, we have different modes of payment. Like we can pay through debit card or internet uh, or an online banking or net bank whatever we call okay let's consider like i am going to ICTC, i am trying to book, book a ticket and i want to pay through net banking okay then i think all of you have booked the ticket in ICTC. first we go to uh, the details uh, we fill up the details what are our details and all how many tickets we want and all and then we go to the payment space in the payment space it will ask whether we want to go for net banking or debit card or credit card banking then we'll select net banking and go next and it will list then uh, uh, all the registered banks okay i'll select icic and click next okay then what it will do it will navigate if you select sba it will navigate to the sba login page have you ever booked the ICTC tickets it will navigate to the sba or icic or access whatever it might be it will navigate to the login page then some some information is being passed from IRCTC to SBA. Like this is the purpose, and uh, this is the person who has uh, who is trying to transfer, and this is the amount we want, and this is the account of IRCTC. Okay, you need to transfer okay some money from the account uh, sorry from the account of this person to the account of IRCTC which is some 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the amount is some 250 rupees and that information should be sent to the SBA or ICIC but how that information is sent from IRCTC to SBA are IRCTC and SBA the same servers? no, IRCTC is different server and SBA is different server, ICIC is different server access is different server then how the information is passed from IRCTC to SBA or IRCTC to something else? Just we check, just we check I, um, ICICA, just if we select ICICA, it is navigated to ICICA homepage. Then how that communication happens? Okay, and how the information is sent? Like uh, from ICICA, did we, do we fill any forms related to IRCTC? We don't do anything, we log in okay just we log in after logging in it will ask uh, some uh, security passwords and we click on submit directly it will and uh, uh, amount will be directed from our account and it will be created in ICS, IRCTC account but how that happens how that happens means the data the requested data or uh, the required data will be sent from IRCTC to SBA or IRCTC to ICS or IRCTC to ICIC whatever the bank user selects let's can select the user selects SBA then the IRCTC application okay will send some information that yeah this is the IRCTC account number 1 2 3 4 5 okay and this is the name of the payee okay and this is the name of the person who has booking the ticket okay some uh, Rajesh Sajay and this is the amount 255 rupees so that information will be sent to the sba server then how this inf how that information will be communicated between two different server means there can be any ways there can be any number of ways that we can send data from one system to another system but the best way the best way to transfer or to communicate two systems is through xml file the best way of communication or the best way of sending the data between system across the systems is through XML files. Okay? Why? Why XML file communication is the best way of transferring the data between two systems is 
XML is generic to all the platform. That means XML is not specific to a platform. Platform means operating system. XML is not specific to a operating system and XML is not specific to a technology. XML is not specific to a operating system and XML is not specific to a technology. XML is a generic format which can be accessed by application of any technology. XML is a generic format XML is a generic format which can be accessed by or which can be read by application of any technology. Let's consider that ICICI or SBA. SBA is using .NET and IRCT is using Java. Then in that case, okay. Can we send uh, the information from IRC to SBI in XML format? Yes. Just because this XML format is generic to dot dot and Java. Let's consider like if that is the case. Okay. Can we send the information in a serialized file? In the form of a serialized file? Do you know the concept of serialization? Persisting the object data into a file system. Okay. If ICIC, uh, if IRCTC is using Java, so that we can serialize uh, object in the file system and we can send it over a network. Okay, and let's consider like IRCTC is uh, sorry, SBA is using Docker. Can we s communicate these two systems through a serialized file, a serialized object? Understand point C. IRCT, let's consider IRCT is using Java as a technology to develop the online application. SBA is using .NET. Let's consider like that. SBA is using .NET. Now, if IRCT is using Java, then from IRCT, what we can do? We can serialize uh, the object whatever we have into a file system, okay, and we can transfer it to SBA. But since SBA is using .NET, can it deserialize that file? No, just because deserialization might be present in .NET, but the way how we serialize is using Java application. A file which is serialized using a Java application cannot be deserialized using a .NET application. So, is that the form? Is that the, is that format valid? If two applications are of different technologies. If using serialization or also, we can transfer the information over a network. But both of the applications should belong to the same technology. But is, is serialization providing that flexibility that we can have with XML? Is serialization providing that much of flexibility like XML? Yes? It's not providing the flexibility, no? Serialization is not providing the flexibility just because if the uh, if the sender okay let's consider like uh, IRCTC is triggering a request to uh, some SBA let's consider like IRCTC is uh, what we call uh, is uh, developed in Java and SBA is developed in .NET now if we create a serialized file from IRCTC and we transfer it to SBA. Since SBA is a .NET application, .NET application cannot deserialize a serialized file from Java application. So, their serialization is not a better approach. Just because here it is one technology, IRCTC is Java and SBA is .NET. So, a serialized file in Java technology cannot be deserialized in .NET, using .NET technology. So, it's different. So it's not a universal thing, it's specific to Java. But XML file format is not like that. XML file format is universal 
and it is generic to all the technologies. Let's consider like IRC is uh, Java and SBA is .NET. So what? We will send the information in XML format. And XML format can be generated as well as it can be read from any technology. That's the basic advantage. That's the basic advantage of XML. Transfer of data across the applications irrespective of technology. Okay? And XML files will be used for configurations. So that reading the XML files, since uh, XML files are very organized and structured, okay, we can uh, configure the entities or we can configure the things very easily. Okay, so most of the configuration files will contain XML files. Most of the configurations in any application will be done in XML files. Just because the data will be organized and reading the data will be very easy and fast. Okay, so whatever the uh, technology you use, either .NET or Java or any technology, in many of the technologies, the configuration will be done in XML files. The reason is organization. The data will be structured and well organized and it will be easy to read. Read means it will be easy for the application or the framework to read the data present in the XML files and it will be fast. Understood? So, most of the applications or most of the frameworks have their configuration files in the XML format. Okay, these are the advantages of XML. Understood? And even XML parsing. What is parsing means? Okay, reading the data into from the XML into the application. Okay, that is called as XML parsing. We call that as XML parsing. XML parsing means Reading the data from the XML to application objects. Reading the data present in the XML into application objects. If it is Java, Java objects. Okay, now let's write a sample XML. Let me write a new project. Hmm. What happened, sir? In the past five or three years. Okay. 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 Eclipse Marcia, 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 Eclipse
the name XML demo and I'm going to create a new XML file the extent the file extension is dot xml as you know okay the xml file extension is dot xml for a text file dot txt okay for a word document it is dot doc or docx like that okay for xml file the extension is dot xml and this is the xml header okay this is the header of the xml and the xml header starts with question mark and ends with a question mark this is the xml header and the xml header starts with if you want you can note it down Okay, so now this XML header contains like uh, to represent that it is the XML tag. Okay, just we represent this as uh, is the XML document. Okay, and the version of the XML document. Okay, the current version is 1.0, but it is a stabilized version. XML version 1.0 is a very stabilized version. Okay. And what is the encoding? What is the character encoding that we need to use? There are several character encodings like UTF-4, UTF-8, okay, and uh, uh, ISO. Some there are several character encoding formats, okay. Why this character encoding formats are used means just if you have some data, okay, if you have some data that data it will be encoded as per this format okay let's consider like in some format uh, some special characters are allowed let's consider like if you take utf8 it will accept any format uh, some german characters will be there german italian french characters will be there if it is iso it may or may not accept uh, the german italian and french characters but if it is UTF-8 character encoding, then it will accept even those characters, those special characters. Okay. By default, ISO will accept only USA or something. Let's consider like if you have Hindi or Telugu or something else. Okay. UTF-8 can accept any character format. Okay. But the other character formats, UTF-4 or ISO, cannot accept multiple lang <laughs> languages. So in general, in most of the cases, the character format or character encoding format will be of UTF-8. How it will do means, let's consider like, uh, Let's consider like we have a uh, French alphabet. Let's consider like we have French K, but it will not be accepted by CPUs just because CPU can recognize the operating system will recognize only uh, zeros and ones. Okay, as well as uh, it can uh, the registers can recognize only English language. So this special characters will not be understood by them. So then, what they, what they, this encoding formatters will do means, okay, 
this let's consider like we have a alphabet k in french language the k will be converted into the corresponding code in co the corresponding utf code okay and that code will be sent to the server and while displaying on the web page or if it is browser or anywhere while displaying on the browser again that is decoded that let's consider like uh, I'm percent one two three four is for alphabet K. Then while displaying back on the browser, I'm percent one two three four again it will be converted into French. Like that. That's what encoding and decoding is. Okay. What is the what is the format that we need to use for encoding and decoding? That will be specified as the encoding option of the XML header. This XML header is not mandatory. It's option. But in general. All of the XML documents will contain this XML header. Okay? Understood? Then, then we after the XML header, we define the actual XML documents, the XML elements. Okay? Then, XML element will be in a, a XML elements will be organized in a tree structure xml elements will be organized in a tree structure let's consider like we want to define a person okay we want to define a person then we write XML tag like person ID name age Like this, we have a all the XML information. All the XML information will be organized. So the person person information is organized in a uh, person element, and ID person ID is organized in a ID tag. Person name will be organized in a name tag. Person age will be organized in a age tag. Height will be organized in a height tag. So this is structured the the xml information present in xml is structured as well as well organized it will not be scrambled like name information will not exist in the idea ID information will not exist in the name let's consider like if it is a text file there is a chance like maybe rajesh 26 or 26 and rajesh but is there a chance like that in the xml file no the data will be well organized. Okay, uh, name will go into the name tag. Uh, age will go into the age tag. So, if it is a text file, we cannot expect that kind of structure or that kind of structured and organized data. But if it is XML file, since everything or each and every information present in the XML file will be structured and organized. It will be very easy to read as well as parse. Parse means convert this XML data into application objects. Okay. Now, this is the tag. Okay. This we the, this whole element, this whole thing is called as XML element. Okay. This person from here to here is called as XML element or XML node. Okay, if you want to put comments in XML, less than not hyphen hyphen. This is the format to keep comments in XML. Either it is single line or multi line comments in XML files. This is the format. Either for single line comments or multi line comments in XML files, this is the format.
okay please don't write this we'll modify this okay just if you want note down just note down the format of comments okay less than not if and if and if and if and okay now let me remove all these things now let's consider like person is a uh, element or we can call person as it is a this combination we can call it is a element or we can call it as a node okay element or node both are the same we can call it as a element or we can call it as a node xml node in general we call it as a element xml element 